Welcome to G42 On Air. As AI and advanced technologies scale at lightning speed, this podcast series brings us face to face with the change makers shaping our future. So take your front row seat with me, Amandeep, as we ask how these powerful new technologies are created, how they're transforming our world, and what's coming next. In today's episode, we ask, how can we make AI more equitable for everybody? And to answer this question and so many more, I'm joined here in the studio by Ashish Koshi, the Chief Operating Officer of Inception. Welcome back to G42 On Air, Ashish. You're a regular guest with us. Now, of course, I've introduced you with the title of Inception, but you were, of course, the first employee of G42 Healthcare A fascinating career journey. Give me a snapshot. Thank you for having me. Yes, it was a privilege to be the first employee of G42 Healthcare. And uh, it has been a wonderful journey there, building it from scratch and scaling it to currently over 20,000 employees. That's exactly what I'm trying to bring in here into Inception. How do we build AI solutions and scale it into multiple commercial use cases. And Inception, how would you summarize it in your own words? So Inception is an AI solutions company that's targeting complex real world challenges by building AI native products. It is at enterprise level and works across sectors. Some of the capabilities that you're aware of that we can build large language models. We are working on a foundational AI platform. So this is plug and play over our existing G4, G42 ecosystem to target large enterprise use cases. You've already introduced so many points there that I really want to unpack with you, Ashish. You mentioned the G42 ecosystem. Tell me about that. I spoke with the group CEO, Peng Xiao, about the introduction of the intelligence grid. What exactly is that and how does Inception fit into this? So, according to me, the intelligence grid is synonymous to electricity. We've reached a stage, it's indispensable. And that's the sort of uh, aspirations G42 has, is to ensure AI is a facet in everyone's life and is indispensable. And how do we fit in into this overall G42 intelligence grid? You're aware we have at the physical data infrastructure, a company called Kuzna. On top of that, we have Core 42, which provides infrastructure and GPU as a service. Inception comes on top of that as the AI solutions company that works together with these two companies to be the AI engine to support not just the verticals within the G42 intelligence grid like Presight for fintech smart city use cases, M42 for healthcare, AIQ for oil and gas, and Space42 for geospatial. So collectively, we work uh, as as an entity to support the intelligence grid to support AI use cases. So that's really good to understand how Inception works in the G42 family, so to speak. On a global scale, um, tell me, is there anything else like it out there? I don't think there's any other entity like G42 that's everything what we just described here under one roof. We have individual entities, we have partners that are working on specific use cases, but to my knowledge, there's not a single entity that has physical data centers, provides infrastructure, provides GPUs, provides AI native use cases, manages hospitals, manages oil and gas, space. So under one roof, I think we are privileged to be under this ecosystem. And that's one of the reasons we've been super successful in a small period of time. So I really want to take a highlighter and highlight that point. This is super unique, what's happening here. Now let's elaborate on inception and what's occurring there. You mentioned earlier about LLM models and also the democratization. Let's unpack that a little bit more. So one of the initial in- initiatives that we worked on is targeting equitable AI is building large language models, but targeting languages that are underrepresented. Arabic was one of it, and we built one of the most uh, high-quality large language model. It's called JACE. It's a 70 billion parameter model. It's multilingual, and it's being used not just in the UAE in multiple countries. The same approach, we've actually also announced in India a model called Nanda, which is again bilingual, and it's, it's Hindi and English together. The capability of these two languages and ensuring that we work on use cases that culturally ensure that uh, we can protect the heritage and ensure everyone has access to these models. So these are just the first two initiatives under our 
large language model uh, project, but we are coming up with other underrepresented languages like Swahili and so on. So the key word there is, you mentioned underrepresentation, and often that is a criticism that's hurled at the internet, AI, AI-driven solutions, and you're actually saying that you've come in and introduced these models in order to actually rectify some of that underrepresentation. That's super important. We're talking about a, a reach, a global reach, therefore, you're providing. 100%, and that's part of our intelligence grid approach. We want to ensure, again, I'm, I just want to repeat that, AI is a, should be a facet in every individual's life, irrespective of what language they speak. We've just started the journey with Jason Nanda in Arabic and English, but I think this is critical that everyone, not just English-speaking audience, should have the power to use the uh, large language model. In J specifically, it's up on hugging face for the AI scientists to play around with, but we've also built a chat functionality for laymen, for people to understand the capability across that. And for enterprises, we also have a large foundation model to run experiments off it. That's super fascinating, Ashish. And I think what's really intriguing for you and I, based here in the UAE, what's happening here in particular is very unique. It's allowing the environment for G42 and Inception to create this. The underrepresentation is actually occurring from the Middle East to correct what's happening in the wider AI world. I think we live in a country that is, uh, has visionary leadership Back in 2017, when AI was a buzzword, uh, we developed the first AI ministry here in the UAE. We developed the first university for AI, Mohammed bin Zayed University, which is a strong partner for us. And building on that, you now you just look at Jitex and the number of companies that are working off the UAE, born out of the UAE, specifically on AI use cases. It's 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 amazing, and I think it's collectively the leadership, the universities and private companies as us working together that's creating an impact, not just on the jobs, but on the potential use cases that we are working here with the large enterprises here. It's really compelling to hear all this, Ashish. I want to unpack further what Inception is offering across the board. So under Inception, we have three main business units. One is known as the AI factory, leveraging our talent that has over 300 plus years of experience in AI and ML. Over 70 to 80 publications, we've built a business unit focused on fine tuning models for enterprise use cases. The models we work are agnostic, it could be based on what the customer needs, and we tweak it with the customer's data based on actual use cases. Another business model that we have under the AI factory is building custom models. It could be in the oil and gas sector, it could be in the health sector, whatever the enterprise needs, we have the capability under our AI factory business unit. So that's the first uh, commercial offering that we have. The second offering is we've built an AI foundational platform where ag any models can be plugged into this platform for enterprise use cases. We also have an agentic layer that we have enterprise level agents that can work on a particular business unit. So it's a subscription driven model on our AI platform. So the third business unit is our product. Uh, we are focusing a lot on large enterprises on corporate uh, environments to focus on productivity, improvement of efficiency, and also cost improvement. One such use case is a navigator known as a procurement navigator. You can plug in a model to immediately find savings all the way from sourcing to generation of the contract, all automated under the procurement navigator. We have another use case specifically known as the board navigator, but there has been a lot of implementations already in the UE and it's public. It can be plugged into any enterprise and it can summarize content for the board's consumption, a normal discussion which or a, or, or, or a document which would have say 200 to 300 pages is quickly summarized for the key leadership to take actual decision making based on summarized content. So that's an entire corporate a &A piece. And obviously the last one is specifically that we is at our core of inception is a responsible AI. G42 and Microsoft have made significant investments specifically on building a center here. We as inception play a close role to ensure that it is equitable and it ensures that we have the right ethics and safety guardrails across our use cases. Here. So what you offer is super comprehensive and very bespoke and specialized, tailored to the need. You mentioned their responsible AI and that central role you play here. Let's explore that a bit. 
So responsible AI is key, uh, and you can see in the news in the terms of the bias that's coming across a lot of data sets. We have seen uh, a lot of misinformation. So it's essential as an AI native organization, we have that core business unit within Inception itself, supporting multiple use cases. And also we are working together with the regulatory bodies to build that uh, business unit within Inception itself. I'm gonna come back to the uh, misinformation in just a moment. Mm -hmm. But if I may ask you about growth areas in the next five, 10 years, at the opportunities you've already identified and you're working in, but where are the growth areas looking forward? So our offerings are agnostic and at an enterprise level. Obviously, we have built Jace and Nanda. We do intend to work across those regions in the beginning to build platforms around these large language models. It could be on content generation. It could be on real-time translation. We are talking to different media companies to actually bring this capability of Jason Nanda to put real-time dubbing and subtitling across other movies that we are working with. So the, I think uh, the growth opportunities are everywhere and we're uniquely positioned uh, within the G42 intelligence grid to drive these solutions. And so with those opportunities, which sounds super fascinating, where do you foresee the challenges might come and how could you mitigate some of those so the challenges, I think, is global. Uh, I think everyone has that uh, uh, challenges bespoke to their use case. For us, we are an AI native company. The number one challenge will always be access to high power compute. It is, it is definitely a race that we are seeing across multiple geographies. So that's one. Second is, I think, ensuring that we have the right data sets to tune these models, uh, provided that we follow the right regulatory privacy concerns that individuals have and the work on models that are uh, catering to that. I think the third challenge, I think, is awareness. I think a lot of people have uh, 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 a misconception that AI is there to take one's uh, job opportunity away, and that's not the case. I think there has to be significant effort on the making an individuals understand the power of AI. It's not there to replace anyone's job, but to augment the job and better decision making. You know what, Ashish, in your final point that you've just made there, you seamlessly allowed me to ask my final question to you. I've been asking my podcast guests, are they AI optimists or pessimists in addressing this idea? There's a lot of misinformation and misconceptions out there. What would you, how would you class yourself? Considering I'm uh, one of the OGs in G42, I'm always an AI optimist and I've always been from this day one. I think the power of AI which we believed in, in, within the G42 universe in day one, and now we're seeing it in, in reality. I personally cannot pass a day without actually using one of the AI applications because I see it's a, playing a significant role in improving my decision-making, improving how I work with the task. So I'm absolutely I'm an AI optimist. Well, Ashish, I introduced you as a regular guest here on the G42 On Air podcast. It means that we're going to have to get you back here. And next time, I'll introduce you as the OG. Ashish, so we're wonderful having you here thank in the you studio. So much. Thank, thank you. Thank so you. And thank you for joining us. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And see you for the next episode of G42 On Air.